You are back on stand with Kelly and Nikki Chewbacca. We are talking to newly minted state senator Rob Yunt, uh, talking to him about his plans uh, as he gets ready to move into the Senate. I want to backtrack a little bit, though, and, and talk a little bit more about your race. It was uh, a trifecta upset in the Matsu Valley. Not only did you overturn uh, incumbent Dave Wilson, but school board member Jubilee Underwood took uh, the seat from David Eastman, who uh, was another conservative uh, legislator, and Alexi Moore won Jesse Sumner's vacated seat against well-known Valley resident Craig Menard. So wondering just how did the three of you work together to accomplish that? Because I think that could be a perhaps a pattern and a strategy that others could consider the next go around to see if we can get better results. I don't know that my strategy is one that ones are going to want to duplicate, but I'll speak to my strategy <laughs> real quick and and how it may have affected all three of us. And so um, I'm not a fan of ranked choice voting. I want to go back to the very best Republican versus the very best Democrat. I don't think you'd get anywhere in life. Uh, we did not put a man on the moon years ago with average ideas, right? I don't want average. I want the best of the best. So, But with that being said, we live in a ranked choice world. And so when there's only three people in these races or four or whatever, they're all going to the final round. Anybody that knows me well knows I do not miss coaching kids for anything. Well, I needed five weeks this summer to travel to Iowa in, in different states and to coach a bunch of kids from Alaska and get ready for national. So I'm not going to miss that for anything. I campaign aside, I don't care. I'm a coach. And so I want to help kids. So I left. I didn't put out any signs. I didn't do anything. I didn't knock doors. I was coaching children. And so I get home and we're right up against the 30 day report coming out. And I told my wife, I said, before I knock a door, before I put a sign out, I want to look at the 30 day reports. And it was clear to me when I seen my opponents, the incumbents 30 day report where all the money was coming from special interests that I wasn't going to do anything before the primary. And I know that sounds crazy, um, <clears throat> but I, I told my wife, I said, I'm not going to do anything because I don't want to motivate these organizations to give him more money. I'm going to bomb the primary on purpose. And so for fun, I put out signs two days before the primary, just for fun. So I could split test. I love analytics. I've built two businesses from the ground up. I love to look at numbers. I put them out in one small area and it looked like I got my butt kicked in the primary when really I took first place in all four precincts where I held out signs. Right. And I only had them out for two days. So Wednesday morning, I woke up and I put signs everywhere so that my opponent would not be able to tell what I did. Right. So that he wouldn't catch on to the fact that, wow, that's what happened. Right. And so where he where he had some signs, people realized most people didn't even know I was running. Honestly, I mean, I've born and raised here. My mom was born and raised here. My great grandpa, right. We're all here for a long time. And I've coached a couple thousand kids in this community. Most people didn't know I was running. So it was an odd strategy. I know that. And then I went to work after the primary with the intentions of getting, you know, 50 plus points in the first round. And so um, I would say that probably affected the girls as well. Um, you know, that probably uh, we were all using the same political consultant and I was gone. I don't want to say I was being lazy. I was being strategic and helping kids. So it probably affected all of us a little bit. The bottom line is those girls outworked their opponents. And as did I. And we didn't barely outwork our opponents we significantly outworked them, mm. right? It wasn't even close. <clears throat> I made a lot of errors in my, if I had to do this over again, I could have done way better. I learned as I went in 2020, like I said, I, a little assembly race, <clears throat> um, I ran at the last minute. I didn't do anything right. Cause I had no consultants to help me in 2023 last year, when I was running for your election on assembly, I didn't have an opponent. So this is my first campaign. This is the first time I did. It was Jubilee's first time too, with a real campaign and it was Alexi's. And so we all made a lot of mistakes. We're all way better now than we were. Um, but it, it basically came down to hard work. It came down to hard work. And so I knocked uh, between my wife and I and volunteers, I would say we hit close to, if not 10,000 doors. And wow. my wife, I need to put this out there right now. My wife is the MVP of this. My wife hit 5,000 doors. Wow. Her team. She personally hit 2,000 doors. In every door she hit in District 28, she talked about me and she talked about Alexi. And every door my wife hit in 27, she talked about me and she talked about Jubilee. And I have nothing against either of their opponents, any one of them. 
I like Stephen Hart. I think he's a great guy. I think he's a great guy. Um, <clears throat> I like David Eastman. I have nothing against David. <clears throat> he ran years ago on a platform of term limits, and he's been there for eight years, and um, he's got a lot of great ideas, but he hadn't passed no legislation. So when you have a school board president standing there at your door, because she hit the doors, Jubilee hit the doors, you have the school board president who says, I took boys out of girls' sports. I took boys out of women's locker rooms, which was happening in our local high school. One of them, right? We had a, an 18 year old boy using the girls' bathroom, and right? So she fixed these problems in a matter of a couple of years. And um, and she's running against someone that's been in Juno for eight years and had never passed a piece of legislation. He's a great guy. I'm not being negative. I'm just being honest. People want results. They don't want people to sit there and spin their wheels. So when you got Jubilee Underwood standing at your door showing you results, I mean, it was a, I, I can't believe she didn't win by 20. 20 points. I think she didn't because she didn't start doing anything until after the primary. None of us did. We didn't do anything until after the primary. So what I'm hearing is a lot of mm -hmm. uh, a lot of hard work. You had to out outwork your opponents significantly, but you also all had each other's backs. You were you were promoting each other, basically uh, making it so that each of you was was knocking doors even when you weren't knocking doors. You know yourself physically because you had one of the other candidates also sort of plugging your name as well. And I think. Um, I love that kind of teamwork in a camp in sort of the campaign season. It'll be great to see that kind of conti teamwork continue into and bleed into uh, the next legislative session in, in Juneau, yeah. uh, which and is what you I get. A, you get a kick out of this. Cause I know you two are, I mean, look at your best friends. You're running a podcast together. It's so cool. Right. I worked district 28 mainly. And my wife worked district 27 mainly. Right. It was just for mm -hmm. whatever reason, it's what worked best for our family. Um, it worked best for me coaching because we live over here in district 28. And so it was easier for me to still hit practices. And it was, it was nothing against district 27. I love 27. In fact, that's where I grew up. Right. But I currently live in 28. I coach over here. So it was best for our family, but my wife hit 27 and worked uh, that one the most. And I hit 28 and we did bigger numbers in 27. So my wife likes to remind me that, you know, <laughs> she did a much better job than me. And, and then, and so, yeah, she was out there working very hard. And, and my wife doesn't have anything against who Jubilee was uh, running against. She just wants results. It's important to her that we protect our daughters and we need a legislature that gets a, along. We need a legislature that can work together and do that. And my wife is very grateful for everything Jubilee did as our school board president. And so my wife went to bat. I stayed in District 28. Trinity went to District 27. And I mean, she's a workhorse, man. Mm. She's not like she's an animal. Thank God for for spouses who are such great supporters and and, and work with us to achieve our, our dreams. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but 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 moving forward from the campaign season, we've only got a few minutes left in the segment. But I I want to ask you, and you've sort of touched on this a little bit. Uh, you know, you you already have clearly a good sense of what you want to do when you move uh, into that legislative session mm -hmm. in Juneau. I'd like to ask you about what some of your goals and priorities are. You've touched on uh, education and, and the whole bathroom issue, which is a big issue. And, you know, making sure that sports are divided along uh, gender lines. Uh, maybe talk a little bit more about some other uh, things that you want to yeah. do. And I'd like to ask you about that in the context of, you know, here in, in Anchorage, you may have been following, you know, our, our assembly doesn't seem to have recognize what's happened on a national level and even on a state level here about people wanting to see more common sense policies. And what we have just learned is they've passed legislation to uh, apply a tariff to a lot of goods now coming into uh, into Alaska. And of course, that cost is going to be passed on to the consumer. And it won't just be people in Anchorage. In Anchorage it'll be people across the state who are, who are taking on these goods. And so we've got that com combined with a uh, ballot measure one that just got passed that's increasing the minimum wage um, and requiring uh, paid sick leave and those kinds of things. And so with all of that combined, we could see major inflation happening or cost of living increases here in Alaska, even as it's going down with this incoming administration. So um, as you talk about you know what your goals and priorities are going into the legislative session in June, I'd be curious to hear any thoughts you have on what you could do or advocate <laughs> for as uh, our new state senator um, coming in to kind of combat we, we, some of the, the the nonsensical things that are happening on the local level. 
uh, that we're seeing? Well, I'm really excited about those tariffs. I think they're going to be great for the budget of the Matsu Borough because we're already getting calls for people that want to dock over here. So <laughs> right. Tariff away because when <laughs> stocks start shipping or, or coming over here, when we're buying a massive crane right now, we're, we're like the crane's already been ordered. It's on the way. Uh, we will be prepared. Um, and so when we start doing much more revenue at the, at the port, which we did do a due to my four-year assembly, I helped grow that immensely. Um, well, that's more money in our general fund. And then we can lower our property taxes even more, which we've done a lot since I was elected locally. Right. So um, yeah, I don't think that hurts the Matsu borough in the short run. It might hurt us a tiny bit tomorrow, but in the long run, I will tell you that's going to help us immensely. So I hope they just keep doing what they're doing in there. It's great for us. Um, Not so good for us though, Rob. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it, uh, it, uh, there's still, there's still great places left to build out here. So it, uh, <laughs> we, you know, other things that I want to do, you've, I could go on about education all day and duplicating the success that we've had out here. Um, I'm very passionate about that. I want to help children statewide with, with good opportunities to, to get their hands dirty in high school, because you, you got to talk about the three E's of education. And I talk about this all the time, but if you're not enlisted and you're not enrolled, then you need to be employable, right? So if a young man or young lady is not going into college or she's not going into the military, then what's that leave? The bulk of the children don't go to one of those two areas. A majority of them go into the real world and they need to be employable. So career and technical education has, uh, we, we, more than doubled that in my four years out here. And I want to do that statewide and help these kids find something that they really enjoy in high school that they're passionate about. I don't care if that means being a hairstylist or doing makeup or nails, or if that means being a cook, it could be anything. You don't have to be an electrician, right? It could be anything, but let's let these, let's help these children touch those things in high school. So they're ready for the real world, right? So, so um, ed education, it sounds like is going to be a really big thing for you, which um, I think it's fantastic. Um, hey, I want to pick up with you on this on the other side of the break because we, we okay. just ran into a hard hard break. You're watching Stand with Kelly and Nikki Chewbacca. Uh, looking forward to more of our conversation with Rob Yunt. Don't go away. Stand by. <laughs> 